kids. I am so glad to be with you this morning for CIPC Kids Church. Um, my name is Carol and we're going to get started. Now, if you remember the last several weeks we've been studying about the life of Moses. Can anybody remember what we've been talking about? You're right. Great job. We've been learning about when Moses was born all the way up to the plagues. That's where we're at now. So, Let's do a little reminder, if you haven't been with us, so you know what's going on. Well, Moses has been going to Pharaoh to talk to Pharaoh about letting the Israelites go free so that they can worship God. But Pharaoh, every time Moses tries to talk to him, he says, no, he won't let the people go. So every time that happens, a new plague comes to cause havoc upon the um, Egyptian people. Do you remember what a plague is? You're right, you do remember. A plague is when something terrible, terrible happens. Now let's go through those plagues so we can keep get everybody up to date. Do you remember what's been happening? Do you remember what the very first plague was? Okay, let me show you my picture. Water to blood. Remember? Remember the um, Egyptians, they worshipped a lot of different things. Here, they worshipped the Nile River, and that's where the water turned to blood, and they had nothing to drink. Um, in our second plague, which we're going to talk about, frogs, frogs, frogs everywhere. Remember, the Egyptians wouldn't kill frogs because they worshipped them. All of these plagues have to do with God trying to teach the Egyptians to not worship the creation, like the frogs or the river, but instead to worship the Creator, to worship Him, to worship God. That's what this is all about, because Pharaoh didn't want to. He had a hard heart. Okay, so we had one, water to blood, two, we had frogs, who remembers what the third plague was that came? And each time the plagues get worse and worse. Who remembers? The gnats or mosquitoes. And they bite and they were all over the people everywhere attacking them. Again, Moses went to Pharaoh and said, Pharaoh, let the people go. And Pharaoh said no after every single plague. So then another plague came. Who remembers what the fourth plague was? You're right. Flies. Flies were everywhere. Flies were all over the people. Flies were in their hair. Flies were in their houses. Flies everywhere. But still, when Moses went back to Pharaoh and said, Let my people go. Pharaoh said, no. So we had to have another plague. Who remembers what the fifth plague was? All the livestock died. They just fell over dead. That was a really bad thing because that's what the people ate. That's where they got their cream. That's where they got their butter. All oh, that was a terrible plague. But Moses' heart was still hard. So when Pharaoh went back to Moses again and said, let my people go, what did he say? Yell it out. He said, no. Everybody, can you say that with me? No. So we had another plague. Who remembers? Come on, somebody. I'm giving you a hint. They got boils all over their body. Do you remember? Big, bad, yucky, gross sores all over them. The people were in pain. So again, Moses goes to them, goes to Pharaoh, let my people go. And again, what does Pharaoh say? Yell it out loud. No, he doesn't do it. Pharaoh has a what kind of heart? Who remembers? Pharaoh has a hard heart. And what does that mean? It means he doesn't care about his people. He doesn't care about God. His heart is cold to God. He doesn't want to hear God. He doesn't want to hear Moses. He just wants to take care of himself. Well, this week we're going to learn what happens because when we left off last week, 
Pharaoh was still saying no. So before we do that, we're going to go sing our Pharaoh Pharaoh song. We did it for a couple weeks and we took a break last week. Get up, get ready, and sing Pharaoh Pharaoh with me. Okay, be back in a minute. Okay, guys, we are back. Wasn't that fun to sing the Pharaoh Pharaoh song? I love that song. Now, let's all get settled down. What do we do to get settled down? Let's do it. Eyes are watching. Ears are listening. Clap. Hands are in our lap. Okay, since I haven't been with you in so long, let's do it one more time just because I like to. Ready? Eyes are watching. Ears are listening. Clap. Hands are in our lap. Are y'all ready? Okay, we've done six plagues. Now, here we go with number seven. Can you show me seven fingers? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven plagues. Seven bad things that have happened to um, the Egyptian people and Pharaoh still still is resisting God. Okay, so our seventh plague is a giant, giant storm full of hail. Early in the morning, Moses and Aaron went again to talk to Pharaoh. And they told Pharaoh that, you know, Pharaoh, you keep exalting yourself above the Lord. You won't listen. So now, if you don't change your mind and let the people go, there's going to be another plague and that's going to be hail, a giant storm and it's going to fall from the sky and it's going to hit everything and if your livestock and your crops are not put up, if the people aren't under shelter, they are going to die. So there, Moses tried to warn Pharaoh and tell him, hail is coming, another plague, get your livestock in do what I say, get the people in. But yet, Pharaoh didn't listen. So what happens, some people did what Moses said. 
Oh, wait, let me re check on something here. I need to make sure you know what hail is. Do you know what hail even is when I say hail is falling? Well, here's a picture. Hail is giant, giant pieces of ice. And in the message from Moses, Moses told them they were gonna be bigger pieces of hail than they'd ever seen before. Hail, these big pieces of ice, fall from the sky. Oh, a whole bunch. They would fall, drop from the sky, and they were big pieces. See, now Pastor Chris is throwing hail at me, pretending to reenact. Okay, I think we got it. <laughs> My pants are coming. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> That's enough. Stop, Pastor. Okay, this is hail. This is a sample of hail. Hail are giant pieces of ice that would fall from the sky. And when they were falling from the sky, they would hit very, very hard. And they would even crush all the plants and all the leaves and all the and hit the livestock and even kill them. So that's why Moses was warning them, hey, when before the hail comes, you better put everything away. Now I've got hail all over my seat and hail is very cold. And now I'm gonna have wet britches. Okay, so if y'all wanna get an idea of what hail is, just if you have a freezer and you have ice in it, go get a piece and put it in your hand. And then that'll give you kind of what an idea. And the hail falling from the sky for this plague was probably even bigger bigger, bigger pieces. Okay. And then Moses also told them that it wasn't just going to be hail. It was going to be lightning and thunder. See, this is kind of an idea. We don't get a lot of storms in Morocco of lightning and thunder. So hopefully you can get an idea. So Moses took his staff and he put his arms up and he put them across the land and the storm and the plague the plague of hail and thunder and lightning came and it hit everyone and the animals who weren't put up they died and people who were out in it they even died it's very very sad but Pharaoh still was not listening okay so Pharaoh sent Moses and Aaron and said sent for them and said hey I have sinned the Lord is right um, I'm wrong. I need to you to go plead with God to stop this hail. We can't have any more of it. And Moses did. He went and prayed to God and the storm was released. But the storm stopped. But what do you think happened? What do you think happened? Once again, Pharaoh said no. His heart hardened back up. And even when the hail disappeared, he was thankful but not thankful enough to start listening to God, he didn't let the people go. His heart was hardened. So, even though Pharaoh knew he was sinning, he didn't let the people go. So now, what do you think is gonna happen? Plague number eight. Another plague is gonna come upon the Egyptian people. And you know, after that hail, um, even Pharaoh's um, People were saying, please, let, the, let, let these people go. We can't handle any more. Egypt is, is destroyed, please. So let's see what happens next, okay? Okay, guys, now we're getting ready to go. Pharaoh didn't listen. He didn't let the people go. So now we're going to the eighth plague. Eight fingers, everyone. Let's count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so this plague was the plague of, who knows, locust. Okay, do you know what a locust is? They kind of looked like grasshoppers. See that? And then what was going to happen was Moses was going to go talk to Pharaoh again. Pharaoh's not going to listen. So Moses is going to say, hey, if you don't listen, we're going to have the plague of locusts. And you know what locusts do? They eat everything. There's going to be so many grasshoppers all over. And the grasshoppers, the locusts, would get on the green bushes, anything that was green, anything that was still alive, that after the hail had hit it and crushed it to the ground, anything that was still alive, the locusts were going to eat. 
they were gonna eat everything. And that's bad because what? If you don't have plants, you don't have wheat, you don't have barley, you don't have vegetables. You, it, it's a terrible, terrible plague. So, that's what happens. Now, Moses um, puts his arm out, puts his staff out, and an east wind starts to come. An east wind, and you know what that east wind brings? It brings all the locusts. Let me kind of give you an example here. The locusts, there's so many that you can hear the buzzing of their wings. And they get on all the bushes, hundreds though, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of them, all at one time, coming in. And, and, okay, and they have the buzzing of their wings. Can you all make a buzzing sound for me? Can y'all make a buzzing sound? Buzz, 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 like your wings are fluttering. Buzz, buzz. So many that you could hear them coming. And those locusts, they got on everything. They ate everything. Here's kind of a picture that might give you an idea. Can you see that? See all that man's walking and all those flying insects all around him? They were like a cloud in the sky. There were so, so many. Now, Pharaoh, of course, is freaking out, and he can't handle it anymore. So, Pharaoh had said, well, maybe some of you can go. The men can go, but not the women and children. But Moses said, that's not right. You can't just let the men go. We need everyone to go. And that's why we had to have the plague of locusts. And again, locusts ate everything. And again, Pharaoh's heart was hardened and he decided now no one will go. Okay, now the people, even Pharaoh's people again were starting to get sad. They were starting to say, please just let Moses take these people and go. Again, Egypt is destroyed. But Pharaoh's heart was hard and he would not let them go. Okay, now, because Pharaoh again continued not to listen, we have another plague. This is plague number, number nine, the ninth plague. And this plague is pretty interesting because look around, look at the sun. Because we have the sun, we have a beautiful world. We have plants and greenery. Isn't it pretty? Isn't it great to have the sun? Well, the ninth plague is darkness. Complete, utter darkness. So much darkness that lasted for three days that the Egyptians could not even see enough to move. They didn't even go from their places. It was utter darkness. The Bible says it was such a deep darkness that it could be felt. It was a terrible, terrible plague. So that's what the ninth plague was. Moses went to Pharaoh, told him to let the people go. Um, Pharaoh refused, so we had darkness. So then, of course, Pharaoh calls Moses to come to his aid. And he tells Moses, okay, listen, I'll let um, the families go, but none of the livestock. Well, again... That's not what God said. You can't just let part of it, part of it go. They needed their livestock. They needed their livestock to eat, and they needed their livestock to make sacrifices to the Lord. So that was totally, totally unacceptable. So now, Pharaoh is so frustrated with Moses that he tells Moses, get out of my sight. If I have to see you again, you're going to be dead. And Moses says, okay, I'm gone. I won't see you again. So now... Now, next week, we're going to finish up for this week. Next week, we're going to learn about what happens next. The worst, the worst plague. But right now, we're going to finish up. We've done nine. We have one more. Don't miss it next week. And right now, we're going to go. We're going to do our prayer time, and we're going to do our memory verse. But we're going to move inside. Okay? Okay. 
Okay, guys, first, real quick review of some pictures. When Pharaoh still said he would not let the people go, God sent lightning strikes and huge hailstones, which stripped leaves off the trees and started fires and destroyed all the Egyptians' crops of food. That was plague number seven, the first one we covered this week. Then came plague number eight. Then God sent a great swarm of locusts throughout the land of Egypt. They ate everything that was green and good to eat, but the locusts did not eat the crops belonging to the Israelites. Remember, I told you last week that all these plagues were only for the Egyptians, not for the Israelites. Don't have to worry about them. God's trying to set them free. Okay, darkness, plague number nine. Still, Pharaoh would not change his mind. So God sent a thick, black darkness over the land of Egypt. But the children of Israel had light in their homes and no darkness at all. That's our plague seven, eight, and nine. So let's glue them on our paper today. Where are my pictures? I just had them. Oh, okay, you'll have to block that out. Okay, so we have our picture cards for our 10 plagues poster. So we're gonna go, let's look at them together. Are you ready? Number one, water to blood. Number two, frogs. Number three, mosquitoes or gnats, lice, whatever you wanna call it. Number four, flies. Number five, death of livestock. Number six, all the boils and sores. Okay, here, do you remember what seven was? Um, hail, oops, I got it upside down. Hail and lightning. Number eight, the locust that ate every green thing. And number nine, the darkness. Three days of darkness where they couldn't even move around. Those are our nine plagues so far. Okay, also, let's look at our pictures. One, say them with me, water to blood. Two, ah, frogs. Okay, three, gnats or mosquitoes. Look at Pharaoh running away. Four, flies. Okay, five, that's right, death of livestock. Six, boils. Seven, hail and lightning. Look at Pharaoh. Eight, grasshoppers that ate everything, all their crops that were left over from the hail. And number nine, complete darkness. Okay, and next week, we're going to see the worst plague, the most dreadful plague. Now, remember, God's goal was from them, for them to learn not to worship creation, not to worship the land or the river or the animals, but to worship the creator, God. And also, think about this. God gave the people so many chances to listen, but Pharaoh never would listen. We want to listen to God. Remember our memory verse? Our memory verse was, Blessed is the man who always fears the Lord, but he who hardens his heart falls into trouble. Pharaoh has fallen into a lot of trouble, hasn't he? We don't want that to happen to us. Let's be sure to listen to God all the time. Listen to our parents. Listen to our teachers. It's important to develop the skill of listening and obeying. Okay, so we're going to finish up this week. We're going to pray. I want you to know I love you and I miss you, and I can't wait to get back with you very, very, very soon. Okay, everyone, hands up. Let's pray. All right? Heavenly Father, dear Lord, I just ask that the kids learn more than just what plague and what happened in what order, but to realize that you are the creator of all, that you love them, and that you want them to listen, not just to you, but to listen to their teachers and their parents to make good choices. 
Lord, I just thank you once again for loving these kids. Lord, of every lesson, I just ask that you come deeper into their hearts. You help them understand more about you and how much you love them. Lord, I praise you and I thank you for this day. In your heavenly name, amen. Okay, kids, I will see you again soon. I hope you got something out of this lesson. Later.